Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at how to host a private mind test server. Really, actually, very simple to do. We just pull up mind test as usual, and of course, normally it starts on your single player tab here. We're going to jump over, however, to server, um, and we'll select an existing world. Um, I don't suppose it could matter, so let's just, well, no, let's not use that one. Let's use, uh, this one should be okay. Okay, we need a name and a password. So I'll just throw a password in real quick here. Pay attention to your server port. It's always defaults at 30,000, but you may have to change it if something else is using that port. Um, do you want creative mode enabled or not? Do you want damage enabled or not? And do you want it to be a public? one or not. Now just because you select public does not mean that anybody in the world will necessarily be able to play. And we'll cover the public part in a later video. You may have to configure your router and your firewall depending on your OS to allow incoming and outgoing traffic on certain ports. So we'll cover that later. This will just announce your server to the list here. So I'm going to leave that checked off for the time being. We have the world selected. We have our same options as always. We can create a new world, which I'm not going to do at this time. We can configure so we can turn different mods on and off. I'm just going to leave that all as is. Um, I'll have to re enter my password here now because that went away. And we start game. Now I'm going to spawn randomly someplace. Okay, this is cool. Whoa, and evidently I have like full privileges already which I wouldn't have expected because I oh you know what I probably have them from when I did this world before or something I don't know anyways let me uh, just connect up real quick here to this game on my laptop again and there should be a hey there Joe is hey Joe my good friend my buddy Joe, 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 I'm going to punch you. Okay, now obviously you can't see my laptop, but I'm seeing this guy punch me, so I'm going to punch him back. Oh, wait, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to punch him back, but I'm punching me, but I'm complaining about punching myself. Anyway, so because damage is enabled, you can punch people, and they can take damage. It's getting kind of dark, though. You know what? Seeing as I am the s computer hosting this game, I have all the privileges I need. So let's change the time back to 6 a.m. Now, and again, you can't see this. I'm on my laptop. Joe actually likes the dark. So he's going to try to change the time to 1800. And again, you don't see it on the computer screen here. But on my laptop, it says you don't have permission to run this command. And I'm seeing the privilege set time. Now, I'm feeling generous. And I want to give Joe some privileges. So I'm going to grant Joe the fly privilege. So now Joe can fly. Now, of course, I could already fly. Yeah, Joe, I think I might be going a little faster than you. Hard to say. Hard to say, buddy. Now, what happens, and I honestly have no idea what happens, if I revoke Joke's fly privilege. Ooh, 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 oh! I'm sorry, I really didn't know that would happen. Oh, this poor guy. Spotty's lying splattered on the ground. Sorry, Joe. I'm so, so sorry, man. All right, so evidently if you revoke somebody's privileges while they're in the air, yeah, we'll just fall to the ground and die. Yeah, well, fortunately, we have the respawn button. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, you have all your privileges. You can grant them. You can revoke them to other users. There's really not too much special there. Um, if we want to trade things, we pretty much just have to throw them at each other. So I can throw some sand at Joe here. Joe can pick that sand up and then throw me, throw me some desert sand. And I can pick that up. Yay, we just traded. Wahoo! High five, buddy. 
That was my feeble attempt at a high five. All right, so that is the looks of things as the server host. Let's switch things up now. Oh, actually, let me uh, disconnect Joe first. Let's switch things up here. Oh, Joe disappeared. And we will now become the clients. So I'm going to just set up a server right here. And we'll be pulling up this information. I believe my port on the laptop is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not want to do that. Let me uh, actually find out really quick what my laptop number is. Because numpad doesn't work. So annoying, but it is an Ehrlich, er, Ehrlich, however it's pronounced, engine problem, not a Mitis problem. Okay, so we have, this is the local IP address of my laptop. And we'll see if this looks correct. Hey, is that Joe over there? Joe, my friend, my buddy, my pal. <laughs> I wonder what happens if you kill the, the server host. Yeah, Joe's probably not going to be too happy. I'm just guessing. Oh, man, Joe, I feel bad for you, man. Okay, well, the game doesn't crash. Oh, yeah. That was bad. I actually just crashed the server. Wow. I don't really know what I just did there. Probably didn't kill the poor guy. Let me pull it back up. We'll connect in a second here. Okay, let's respawn. Okay, so uh, it looks like I can't respawn. And I don't know why. So we're just going to grab a different world. Information will all stay the same as far as to connect. So there's no biggie there. Just waiting for the server to come online. All right, we are online. And I'm assuming I'm going to spawn right next to where I spawned on my laptop. So I'll just give myself a little bit of space. This is a slightly heavier world, which is why it's taking a little more time to load. It's also being hosted by my laptop. Wow, I spawned, well, kind of, maybe, ish. Yeah, I'm nowhere near Joe. Joe, I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't mean it. It was an accident. I promise. Totally an accident, man. Totally. Don't be too mad. Okay, I don't know where Joe is. He might be really far away. We may not be able to find him. You know what? Let's just fly over. Let's, uh... Ah, you know what? I don't have the fly privilege. That's terrible. Well, I'll just grant it to myself. My privileges are insufficient. What? Okay, let's uh, pull up chat and say, Joe, give me fly privs, please. Oh, hey. On my laptop, I'm seeing that message. Well, I suppose. Grant Nathan fly. Hey, Joe granted me privileges to fly. What a nice guy. We're just going to fly up over these mountains. We're going to find Joe. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know what I said about finding Joe? Yeah, we're not going to do it. He's too far away. Okay. Well, let's say we want to change the time of day. Ah, oh, you know what? I don't have privileges. Well, back to the server hosting. Hey, it's 6 a.m. in the morning. So that's really all there is to it, guys. There's nothing too difficult. The computer that's hosting it should be your most... <laughs> the computers that's hosting it should be your most powerful machine for obvious reasons mainly that it's pretty much doing all the processing your clients are pretty much all just connecting as dumb terminals and not doing anything i had forgotten about this little valley here it's so peaceful and tranquil except all these dumb little black things that I don't know. Something's wrong with them. They just don't work. However, not to worry about that. Because this is not about these little black things. Okay, so that's how we connect up as a client and as the host. 
So let's take a look at how to determine which computer is the most powerful and therefore by extension, which computer we should use to host the game. So I'm going to close this and I'll be right back in a second on Windows and then I'll be come back after that and show you how to check it on Linux. All right, so I've jumped over into Windows here and process is exactly the same. I just want to show you how you find out your IP address on Windows. So I should explain what I'm doing here. Start all programs, accessories, communication, network connections. It'll pull up your network connections here. You, depending on how many network connections you have, will show multiple. Just make sure you collect the one that's um, active. So your connected one here. And right under the support tab. And now, of course, this is Windows XP. It's probably a little bit different than Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Windows 10, all that. But it'll be something similar. IP address. 192.168.1.204 is my IP address here. Um, if you leave mine to set your defaults, it's going to be that 30,000 for the um, for the second number of the port. Um, and then to find out your system information, to find out which computer in your network is the strongest, just go to my computer, right click on nothing, pull up properties, and uh, right here under your general tab, tells me we have an Intel Core i5 CPU, which no surprises there because this is actually a virtual machine running on my desktop in Linux Mint. So I have my full i5 processor here, and I have two gigs of RAM. Um, the system actually does have eights, but I've only allocated two gigs for the system here. So we would just pull this information up on all the computers, find out which one has the highest gigahertz for your processor, which has your most RAM, decide between those which will be best to host the server. Um, I personally would say you'd probably want to go with the one with the higher gigahertz regardless of RAM. And yeah, then you just set up your server and you are good to go. So that ends this portion. Alrighty, so generally speaking, you're going to have a system info, uh, and it may be called different depending on what distribution you're using. I am running Linux Mint, which of course is an Ubuntu derivative. Any Ubuntu derivatives such as Ubuntu, Edbuntu, if that one's still around, and I'll see Ubuntu itself. It probably Arch, Debian, Gen 2. I'm guessing everything's gonna have a system info. And that is gonna let you know what kind of a processor your computer has. In my case, Intel Core Duo i5, quad core, 3.2 gigahertz. It's going to let us know how much memory we have, 7.7 .7 gigs, hard drive, graphics card. The only thing that really matters too much, processor and memory. Uh, I don't think my test uses anything on the GPU yet. Hopefully at some point that'll become a possibility. Because I've got a, I mean, come on, a GTX 660 Ti. That's a pretty good graphics card. So that's how you find out your system info. Again, you want higher numbers for processor and memory for hosting. And also, you need to know well, what your um, IP address is for a local game. Just pull up your terminal, um, Control Alt T usually. Again, on Linux Mint, it pulls it up. Um, and I know this will be different on some systems. You may not have the IF config, but if you just run IF config, it'll give you your internal address under whether you're connected up with wireless or if you're connected with your etho i'm connected with the little wlan here internal address here is 192.168.1.181 so that is the address of this machine now if you do not have that you can go right to your wireless connection box here and look at your network settings i believe hit this hit the preferences button and it will tell us our IP address right here 192.168.1.181 it also gives us a Mac default route and DNS only thing you need to worry about is your IP address everything else you can just completely ignore because it's not important um, and of course you need to know that so you can connect to that computer with another client to play the game so that should cover everything, guys. You should now know how to host your own private MITA server so you can play with family and friends, 
Of course, everybody does have to be connected to the same network. So let me um let me show you what this is like. And I'm assuming everybody's gonna know if you already know stuff about networks, you can just shut the video off now because this is gonna get pretty lame. It really will. Okay. I'm gonna be drawing with the mouse. Yeah, no good. No good at all. Okay, so we have Oops, didn't want to do that. So basically, this is what this is going to allow you to do. Everything has to be connected to the same network. So we have our little router here, um, you know, with the lights on it and stuff. That's our router. Now, I have my desktop sitting right over here. That's the screen, by the way, which is actually a super tiny screen. No, you know what? This is the screen. This is the screen. That's my tower. I've got my buddy who's got his tablet here. That's a tablet. I know you can't tell. And then I've got my sibling that has his laptop. And then I have another computer. With a super wide screen, I guess. And a horrible bevel. Man, that is a terrible computer. Yeah, there's also keyboards on these computers. Very narrow keyboard there. And of course, the little mouse. And because who wants to play on a trackpad, they've got a mouse. And you know what? This guy with his tablet, he's got a wireless keyboard and a mouse too. Now, everything has to be connected to this router. So, our Wi Fi signal coming out to the tablet. We also have our Wi Fi coming out to the laptop. This computer and this computer are both plugged in with an Ethernet cable. They're all connected to the same network. Now, if I have another friend, this is all inside of my house. This is my house. It has very crooked walls. That's my house, okay? Now, my neighbor lives right over in this house. And he has his own router, which doesn't have any antennas. And he's got a laptop. And he doesn't have a an external mouse, because he's just a sucker like that. Now, he wants to play with me. Well, my router and his router are not talking to each other. He's connected up to his router with his Wi-Fi. So, I have two choices. Either I let my neighbor know my Wi-Fi password and let him connect. Kind of sketch. You know, he might decide to use my internet to do other things download movies stream stuff you know whatever maybe hack into my network and steal all the files off my server bad things could happen you probably don't want to give your neighbor your password for your Wi-Fi so what you would want to do in that case unless of course you trust him which I kind of guess you would have to if you were gonna give him that information still probably not the best idea to do it um, but instead, you could set up a public server, which basically would then allow your network or your router here to connect back up to your IP, which is someplace off screen here. Uh, that would be your provider. And then your provider can route that information along to your neighbor's router. And then your neighbor's router, again with no antennas, can talk to his laptop and you can both play the same game. The data is just all traveling off to a data center someplace and over to your router. So that's the difference. Again, I apologize for the horrible graphics. I was wrong with the mouse. Really should have grabbed my tablet and done it, but eh, this worked. So that is that, guys. We will have another video at some point, I'm not sure when, on how to set up a public network. And not a public network, a public server. So your neighbor can connect via these wires here. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again next week. Um, and we'll probably be back to our regular scheduled sub-game updates, but I just want to throw this video out. And really didn't have anything for my sub-game update. I've been really busy with other stuff, so I thought I would throw this out instead. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody. It's going to be the same system on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It all sets up the same. I really have no idea how you find any information on your Mac computers. I'm guessing it's 
somewhat similar to how Windows and Linux do it, but I've never used a Mac, never wanted to. Don't know, don't care. Google it. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next week.